and welcome to you. <laughs> I'm playing a very, very hard game. A very, 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 very hard game that uh, I created and that is stupid. That is called in French, pre-mortem, before I die in English. The concept is easy. I try to explain you something um, that I have done and I consider that I will be dead tonight, so I cannot explain it later and I cannot uh, say it will be over there. No, it's I'm dying tonight, what I want to share, what I want to give, that's all. I will later on put some rules on the formula to be able to do all the episodes like this. For the moment I just trying myself and is that is that already good enough. So what I'm talking plenty of sentences that make no sense. For example, what I'm talking tonight that my last night, so we don't care. <laughs> so what I will talk about before if I had to die tonight. I'm working on a big application that is called Open Macro Input. Uh, and this application, if I were not dying tonight, would have been amazing. Basically, um, what, I, what I realized is that uh, augmented reality and virtual reality don't have what we call a keyboard. And that's really hard when you're in VR, so to write stuff, to do stuff, to command stuff, to play to, uh, to some game, it's really, really hard. So uh, what I try to do is try to create some uh, keyboard. I try with noodle box that you put your, in your hand. I try with your feet. Uh, for example, I did this stuff here uh, where you have button here and you can do that or that. I make action. You will say, yeah, but it's not a keyboard. Yeah, I know. The idea is that there's plenty of action that you make on your keyboard that you don't really need on the keyboard. Shift, CTRL, escape, uh, enter. And so you can put them uh, away on another device. And that's the aim of open macro input. It means to be, op to, be to, to choose openly what will trigger a macro. So a macro is some action uh, as an input and uh, then apply this action to do something. So it's really a bridge between I want to do something and something happen. That's the open macro input logic I was trying to do before I learned that I'm dying tonight. Once again, it's fictively, it's not real here. But um, so if you have to continue this project, let's talk about it. So how did I do that? In my past, I have uh, I had a Kinect, and uh, to be able to detect if the user has the hand here, you can check that the angle here is 90 degree, and the angle here is 90 degree, and you can do that for the other one, and you can also check the height between the here and here and the height between here and here and basically with all those kind of information you can say the guy has the hand in the air so what will happen is that you will need to quote plenty of script saying if that if that if that if that if that if that and so basically you will realize quickly that there is lot a lot of if and lot of if that can be reused because the saying that I have 90 degree here, there's plenty of other stuff. There is that, there is that, there is um, that, there is that. So there is plenty of action that can be compressed in some ready to use boolean. Okay? And so if you do this kind of stuff, it means that uh, you can make some boolean logic and this boolean logic you can export it and say on any Kinect, uh, any device that track the human body, I can ask those questions, transfer them to Berlin, and when I have the Berlin, I can play with it like I want. So you're gonna have, for example, a Berlin that says, is the user is down, is the user is on the ground, 
Is the user is up? Is the user uh, turned back to the Kinect? Is the user is looking at the Kinect? There's plenty, thousands of boolean that the developer can create. And uh, what I would have done in the future if I was not dying tonight um, is to make some um, some API with plenty, plenty, plenty of code that the developer is coding. And uh, the user can say, I want to use this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. He select everything he needs and the boolean are created. And so that's what you see here. It's just a board with plenty of boolean that the user say, I want to use those, to use those, or I want to rename those in this kind. For example, here I have an API that uses the mouse and I ask to be able to see uh, if the mouse is moving here and in which direction the mouse is moving. And so I have another code that is called um, boolean register um, in my Unity code that you can go check uh, on the folder that allow you to say, hey, does those boolean are true? For example, if I'm going le right and I'm going up, this one and this one is true. And so what you can say in, is say, is those boolean are true? And if yes, it means that I'm going over there. We'll say, yeah, but I can do that with programming. Yeah, that's true. But what is really hard with boolean actually in programming is with time. Because uh, I, d I did not know if you, I don't know if you know it, but we spend all our time coding if in if in if with time all the time to be able to check information. And as programmer don't like time, we try to do applications that don't use time. So uh, what I've done in my code for the moment is something that can say, does, was it true at this time? And if it's true, if it's uh, switched down or switched up, then cool. And so what happened is that in, s in my application, I did try uh, I not. I, I think it's still working. It's called linear boolean state machine. You can say does this one, then this one, then this one, then this one is supply, and it means that you can you take a mouse and do quick, and when you finish the move, it will do an action. So basically, it means that if you take the same logic for the Kinect, it means if you can make plenty of boolean asking, is the hand uh, up the user? So now you have a, a boolean that can say is the have hand is up and you make some other boolean that you compile to be able to have a boolean that say the hand are down the head of the user. And so now you have two boolean, is up, is, is down. And it means that you can say if it's up, then down, then up, then down, then up. It means that the user is doing that. <coughs> and yay, you just did what? A recogni recognition of action. So now, we can say if the user is doing it means that he wants to uh, do an action that can be uh, I want to make appear a menu or that can be could you save the file or that can be uh, could you tweet about what I'm doing in the next 30 seconds and so as you can understand there is a lot of action that could be done and so that is a part of the program that is called uh, the history, pro uh, history command here it's basically uh, in the application for the moment, if you go see the Unity code, I have something that is called an interpreter. And the interpreter is um, you send a sentences that is a note to him and the interpreter will launch the, the line to an auction house. And all the code that is in the software will uh, try to say, hey, I understand this line, I take it. And he tried to execute it. And he sent a report saying, I did not succeed to do it. Uh, and if he don't send the, the report, it means that he succeed to do it. And so uh, what happened is that the interpreter, for example, if I say, could you um, make a sound that do beep? Uh, you send the line, the interpreter will send it. And uh, the interpreter of the keyboard, don't know. The interpreter of the console, don't know. The interpreter of uh, um, clicking on the screen, 
So he will go like this on each interpreter, and the one who say uh, the one that is dealing with this sound, we say, hey, hey, I I recognize this line. He does the action. That's amazingly powerful. Why? Because it means that you can have plenty of Boolean that can be associated to logic that you, the user can create on the fly. And when you have that, you can say, hey, if you recognize, if you recognize this uh, situation, could you do this? And this, it means that if the developer has it in the application, it will do it. But if the code is not over there, any developer can add something in the application uh, and say, okay, tweeting about, it means connect on the API of Twitter, put the key that is stored in this file, and uh, on the name of this guy, put this uh, text and validate it. So it means that if someone could uh, a code like this and add it to the program, it means that now if anybody say here, um, in one second tweet, I'm doing live now, here, like this, and you send it, it means that in one second, he will receive another command uh, that is called here, uh, tweet I'm doing live now. And what happened is that this command is recognized and this one not. Why? Because I, di I don't have for the moment an API that allows to tweet. So the application is just saying, I send it to every interpreter and they said that they didn't understand that. And what happened is that uh, I tried in my last version, but as I'm dying, it will not be in this version, to make a file or a sharing those information of, hey, this application did not understand it, but if you are an application outside of me that is understanding it, take it. Take it. So what happened is that you can do another application on the size that will try to understand what he did not understand. But uh, yeah, so basically that's the idea is that you have plenty of text that has some format and those format is doing action. So they can be, it can have conflict based on the API you import, but that's the idea. And that's really, really powerful because it means that the user can create his own, um, his own macro. And uh, for example, you could say uh, that you have a macro that um, say hello, okay? And this macro behind will call another macro that will call another macro that will call another macro. And those macro uh, can be, uh, when I say hello, it means go on Twitter, post hello, go on, my uh, go on my Discord, say hello, go on Facebook, say hello, uh, go in the game, say hello. And uh, if the API, it will be a line that send a line that send line that send plenty of line and everything will whoosh, uh, just fold around you. But it mean also mean that it's not controlled. So it means that when you trigger an action, you cannot say stop. You cannot say stop. You can close the application, but you cannot say stop. So this th this is the weak point of this technique, but for the moment it works really well for um, what I'm doing. It means playing video game and and go doing a so software. Before I I learned that I'm dying tonight, so no more software, no, no more game for me. But you can with the application for the moment. So that's the idea, and you will say, yeah, but uh, why? <laughs> why this application? Uh, is needed and why you should continue this application uh, tonight uh, because it's a big step for virtual reality and for AI and uh, for living with AI. Why? Basically the problem is that in virtual reality uh, we have some very big difficulty to um, detect um, action, detect uh, recognition of movement and uh, when you, you co as for the Kinect, when you use Boolean like this, um, it's very, very easier to have uh, this detection, uh, to, to build some detection based on plenty of Boolean. Uh, the second part is that in virtual reality and augmented reality, you could pl do plenty of stiff stuff, but it means uh, having plenty of interface, plenty of button, plenty of action, and um, Sometimes it can be boring. For example, I, I give you a, qu a quick example. I'm creating 3D assets in uh, Gravity Sketch. 
and uh, I want to save it in a specific folder with a specific format of name. It means that I need to stop working in VR, go in the menu, open another menu, open a menu that will ask me to put some name, type some name, close the menu, select where I want to save, finish, press the button save, and uh, when I'm done, close all the menu, and now I can work. So it means that I spend like 30 seconds to two or three minutes saving my file. That would trade juice. I mean, that's really, really boring like hell. And what I want to do is this kind of concept. And now it's too late before I die. But what you should do with <laughs> your application <laughs> uh, in the future is uh, to allow communication, to allow external communication to your application. So, uh, for example, you, you take the interpreter that I, I did in Unity and you improve it. And you just allow people to send you information to your application that you want to save uh, the current application, the current work in a folder. And if you receive this command, it means that the user wants to save it. Don't spend time having plenty of menu, don't spend time doing plenty of useful, useless stuff. Just allow someone to send a Mac show based on the uh, of, of what he wants. Um, and like this, you, you win time. For example, uh, I'm in Unity and I want to start a new scene with uh, five or six cubes in it. And uh, these five or six cubes, I, I want them to move. It means I want to load a specific scene in Unity. So in the way I see that is that I would like to have a macro that will say to Unity, could you import this one, do that, do that, and do that. And then you do that, that, that. And when you are done, it's okay. And when I, if you have this kind of tool, it means that you will win a lot of time. But to do this kind of tool, you need to allow in the application to be able to listen to that, be able to receive that, to understand that. And that's the big part that is really hard. Yeah, I, I think I go a bit away of the subject. But yeah, what I mean is that it we are really, really missing something that allow a uh, user that is using the application to send a uh, request from programming, from AI, from bots. Um, and to explain a bit that, I will talk about video game. So World of Warcraft is a game uh, where you have uh, 30 power, 30 power to deal in the game. Some are useful, some that you will use all the time, some that you will use just sometime. And it's really hard to deal with all those buttons in any direction, with your life, with the game, uh, select a player and then heal him. And so you can quickly understand that macro is used to be able to deal with those buttons. That's what users are, are using. And it's so hard to uh, deal with those plenty of power that everybody is cheating in the, on the game. How they are cheating? First cheat, this mouse and keyboard. You can program action on the button here and it's called macro and people are like, yeah, but if the macro is doing one stuff, it's a low, but don't make me, don't make me uh, start on that. Nobody, uh, except in, in contest will do one action on the macro button of those mouse. Oh, that, that's really cheating. And more than cheating, they are using plenty of UI uh, on the screen that if you have the mouse over, it will trigger a, a, an action. It's not cheating. It means that a player that is playing regularly to the game is not uh, don't have this add-on, so he will not win against this kind of player. And there are some players that if you have the mouse on an image and you click left or click right on the mouse, it will do different action. Is that not cheating? So there is plenty of cheating in World of Warcraft um, that is legalized and people say it's not a cheat. Yeah, it's cheating. So my application is just adding some cheating ways. So why? Because basically, if you look at my mouse here, I have a code that allow you to say uh, this 
part of the screen has a boolean name so it means that if I'm here I will be on the this part of the screen 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 and it means that now in WoW with this application I can do this tac 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 and tac 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 it means heal me and tac 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 it means heal the pet and tac 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 it means um, invoke this and tac 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 it means fire of a ball of fire and that's really powerful it's really really powerful and there is plenty of other stuff because what happened is that as I don't have um, as I have only boolean boolean it's all my application I don't have load quaternion and stuff mean that you can resume that by uh, is uh, it's the, this zone of the screen is active but also is the keyboard is active or is the user is looking to the webcam it's not in the application for the moment looking the webcam but that's the idea so it means that when I'm playing World Warcraft I can shift and shift mean I'm listening to a movement on the screen and I release shift I'm not listening to it that's amazingly powerful and if I don't have place on my keyboard I just put an Arduino and I have a code that allows to read the Arduino input and uh, link it to a boolean I let you go to the documentation of the, um, the wiki page in the description if you want to know more because I don't have time tonight uh, before I die uh, but that's really 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 powerful <laughs> because it means that if you can link context together to be able to do action it means that you can um, put a lot of action stored in uh, and ready to be triggered in some context uh, so yeah for example I, I will give you an example that I'm using a lot in my game jumping we don't jump a lot in, in game but uh, jumping is not very disturbing for the gameplay so what I have done is that if I jump it's happening nothing but if I jump for a long time it means can you listen I have to do an action so what happened is that if I jump for more than one second on by pressing the, 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 spa the, the, the space bar it means could you heal people around me and uh, if I jump two times in a row so if I do tech tech it means could you heal with this heal on this region and if I do tech 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 so I'm doing some morse with the, the, the space bar it means could you heal me with the power of a certain region around me so it means on me and so you, you can see that there's plenty of stuff but when I'm chatting it means like when each time I press space it will write something so wh what I've done is that I have a zone on the screen here the top zone and I say if my mouse is on the top zone of the screen I want to create a boolean that is saying I'm chatting and so now in my code I can say if I have the spar that is doing morse or if I have um, the, the space for a long time and my mouse is uh, on the chat zone then don't do action I just want to chat because in game it's really really rare when you have your mouse over there on the top of the screen and so yeah that's really cool it also means that if now someone give me uh, some a device that you can put on the, your finger that is a tap wizard that uh, I have somewhere over there um, and that you make a code connected to the game to your boolean state s register it means that you can also say if I'm pre if I'm tapping some information with my finger and I said that, that I'm listening to it so for example it can be if I press uh, F11 uh, I'm listening and if I repress it stop listening so if I press F11 and I do tac 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 it makes some action so for example you could say um, people we need to rush back that's a text that you want to put on the chat then it means that you press F uh, F11 to say hey I want to say something and tac and now you just said to everybody in the chat hey guy we need to go back that's that's really the kind of action that is amazing, I think. So yeah, that that was the idea. There is plenty of other stuff. I, so I told I told 
I I did say V A R A N A I. Why I'm saying that? Because more I'm coding this application, uh, more I rei I'm realizing that uh, it's easy to code bots. Because when you can associate action, keyboard, mouse action, or, or just kind of small action, and that you compile them one behind another, and that you have a context of Boolean that allow you to trigger that, uh, it's really easy to press two or three buttons to contextualize some action, and so, so have some logic, and so have something that is running around. For example, I have a bot that, for the moment, and see over there, I have a bot on World of Warcraft uh, that is fishing. And if I press another button, he will not try to fish, but he will try to kill some creature around and win money and take the money on the ground. And that's basically some basic macro, really stupid to do. Um, uh, if, uh, for example, the input I'm using to be able to know if I'm fishing is does the sound of the, the, the computer or does the sound wait yeah does the sound of the computer is a bit too high and if yes uh, is it too high for this amount of time if yes i'm fishing and if i'm fishing could you launch the macro of fishing and that's really uh that's that's really cool because now i, I can just make uh, some bot do some stuff for me when i'm when i'm sleeping when i'm away when i'm eating stuff like this and uh, there is other, other kind of stuff like this. So you can easily see that an AI, at least some code that look like AI is really easy to do. But it also means that if you want to code your own AI based on that, you could really, really done it. Uh, you can not do it for the application in this application now, because I was working before today on some code that allowed to take those boolean and make it easy access in memory RAM to for other application to come and just add some code behind. But as I'm dying tonight, you can ha not have it, but you can code it easily. And basically, it means that AI love context and love boolean, and so you can easily take those uh, context here. So there's plenty of boolean you have. Give them to to the AI and make some assistance. So, for example, um, I did an experiment, but the code is too dirty to give it to you. That allows to track the pixel screen, and if a certain zone of the screen is uh, green, it means that I have life. But if it's not green, it means that I need heal. And I have another part of the screen that is saying if this part is green, it means that it's an ally that I'm targeting. If it's uh, yellow, it means that it's a neutral unit. And if it's red, it means that it's an enemy. And if not, there is nothing. So it's just six boolean, but give you a lot of context. Because if you say I have an enemy and I have no life, it means that I need some healing assistance. So the bot can say, mm, I will press the button to heal. <laughs> but if I have no life and there is no enemy, and y he sees that the life is move is not moving at all, it may be, be it may be that I could I could be healed by some drinking or eating something. And so um, for the moment, what I did is that if I'm not moving for long uh, for more than four seconds and I don't have life and there is no enemy, then uh, it means could you uh, press the button to eat something? And so each time I, 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 have, uh, I want to eat, I'm not clicking on the button eat, I'm not going on the macro in WoW for, for eating, I just stop to move and my, my character start to eat. That's crazy amazing. <laughs> That's crazy amazing because it means that you have the possibility to have some assistance AI, assistant programming if you don't want to call it an AI, but uh, in the future we will have stuff like this. For example, uh, what I want to have is some AI that uh, look at my screen and uh, look at my computer and say, hey, you're in Visual Studio and I see that you are creating a class. Do you want me to create an interface for that? Do you want me to create those property for that? Or, or an AI that can at least trigger some menu and say, hey, do you want that? Because I think you want that. 
and if you click it it will action ac it will trigger action and uh, that kind of stuff could be really really cool so the other part that uh, you should really think about as I'm dying tonight, it's really hard to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to talk about a project and things like you would die tonight. So excuse me if I'm a bit weird in my talking. What I wanted to try in the future is to have AI synchronized between device. And what I mean by that? I had a project uh, that is using a gear there, so it's a reality device that you put on your head. And this reality device that you put on your head uh, don't have a lot of power in CPU and GPU. And so what I did is that I have a Kinect on a PC that is running around, analyzing what you are doing with your body, and converting that to some action that, send that the Kinect sends in short string saying, hey, he's doing the T-mode, hey, he's, he's uh, jumping, and stuff like this. He just sends those information uh, when needed to the device. And what I was realizing is that basically as I have a lot of power on the computer that are not used, I, sh I could use it. And so what I did is that I, I all the enemy and the logic of the enemy was computer the computer, and also send to the Wi-Fi, to the giver, and like this, the giver just have to render what's happening in the headset and try to deal what he need to deal. But most of the CPU and GPU process was used on the computer. And I think that it's really the, the good way to see stuff for the future. So what I mean is that I really, really see a world where you have a backpack with you. And in this backpack, you have a graphic card, a CPU, and a double hard drive um, storage and this backpack allow you to um, share power with this computer you're using or share the power with the a with the virtual or augmented reality device you have for example you put your oculus uh, vr and you are doing some software and you want to render an image do the rendering of the image need to happen on the headset or do you need just to say to your backpack, could you render me this image? So you just send the file of the, the, com the information of what you need to render. I don't know how, but you send those information. And you just say, could you render that? And uh, just ping me when you have done, done it. And like that, you have a computer working for you and the device that allow you to work in the virtual reality environment. It could be more easy to understand if you have, uh, for example, uh, for example, you need to j to have uh, plenty of channels like Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram. You have plenty of people around commenting around on so all those platforms, and you ask someone to deal your community. What you could do is you have a virtual reality device uh, that uh, can access to those information. Uh, directly on the headset or on the backpack or on your computer and uh, the device just there to display them and when uh, something when the user on the headset say I want to trigger to ban this one I want to comment over there I want to do that I want to do that don't need to be done on the headset you can just send the command on the backpack and the backpack will do will automatically do it on the list so you can just send to the interpreter, could you tweet at this guy or could you block this guy or could you do this stuff? Um, and, and yeah, that's basically all you need to do. Uh, and so I see a future that is like that, where a lot of, a lot of device can speak together. And we'll say, yeah, but I see, this, I see what you are talking about uh, with this uh, comment section. But what do you mean, what is link with the boolean? The link with the boolean is kind of simple. There is action that need some text. I'm tweeting, I'm doing live now, it's some text. But there is plenty of information that are booleanable, meaning that can be turned into true or false, that is important to share between the device. For example, if the headset is on. If 
the user is in the application uh, that allow to manage the media system, then the computer wants to have an application that will be able to send those information to the platform. But if he is not in this condition, is it useful to have the sending device information? No, so you can close this application. So it means that if you share the information that he wants to send some social media action, then you can uh, start to warm up the computer to be ready to do it. And as soon he leaves the application for a certain amount of time, you want to say, okay, no, I can close this application. I will not use them anymore. And there is plenty of situation for, uh, for that. For example, if you want to track uh, the time you are, you are working for your boss, you can easily have um, some button on your desktop. You click on it and it means I'm, I'm working. And the boolean go through, poof, and the server uh, receive uh, I'm, I'm working. And uh, the server is like this, converting all this boolean to uh, the time people are working or not in the, in the, in the community. And you can directly see that it's important to be able to communicate. But if you want to communicate action, it means that you need to have oriented, ob oriented oriet al ori ah, object oriented programming, meaning that you have to store the information, to have a kind of information, to store it on the database, to store it on. There's plenty of stuff that is really, really uh, heavy and, and heavy, heavy, heavy and complex. While if you use Boolean, you just need to store one information is that you just click on the button. So it switched true and it switched false on those Boolean. And this is really easy to store and it's not taking a lot of data. And if the user is sending, um, I'm in the office and I'm working on Twitter because the, as the bot is saying that he is working on Twitter, it's just two Boolean that he need to send and that's all. So it means that um, do you really need to have complex stuff? No. So what I was trying to do before I die today, tonight uh, is to make an API uh, in C Sharp that allow you to really easily store Boolean based on the name, Boolean based on the time, and to be able to say those Boolean, I want to send them to uh, this computer using uh, memory RAM when it's from application to application that is called memory file sharing file or something like that. UDP when it's application to application on your computer or on a local network and uh, using MQTT when you need to talk to something outside of your network. And so if you use only those three one and you have a good API managing uh, all these Boolean. Oh my God, you will be able to have a communication that is fast, that is good, and that is understandable by all human and usable and processable by all AI. And so it means that the bridge between AI and human are whoosh, shorter. And more this bridge is shorter, more you can do uh, crazy stuff uh, with your computer and with your device. And as augmented reality and virtual reality will be ready in five to 10 years, it means that you will be able to, uh, in five or 10 years, use my tool with your code because I'm dying tonight. But what I wanted to do, yeah, I will more resume that by what I wanted to do before I die tonight is to make a bridge between this triangle of AI, virtual reality, and um, uh, action of the user and make them live together. And as virtual reality will be, so we are here and virtual reality is coming soon and augmented reality is coming behind. I say that soon because it's there, but it could be largely better. AI will come with glass that you can put and those glass will change the way not a lot at start, but if someone continues this program, um, me re resurrected or uh, someone else, uh, it means that we will be able to have a very good AI. 
because if you can understand contexts it means that you can display information that are really good in for the context and so do also action that uh, are depending on the context and it means that you can have important information displayed in the glass and as we have a small space with the glass it could be really really good so basically ai uh, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality will come and in seven to ten years ai will become to be to be good not perfect but good i need 10 to 30 year, uh, 10 to 30 years we will have an amazing ai system that will come more and more powerful more and more useful and more and more more and more needed in your work of every day so if the ai has so much power you need to be able to communicate with her and to communicate fast and to give them plenty of context and that's why i'm creating this boolean utility it's because computer love boolean and so uh, if you can provide boolean to the computer be a, a that are uh, available all the time through computer shared together um i think that it really the reason why i'm talking about this it's really because i want to not miss this opportunity because if we if we don't code that it means that we will be stuck for years and years coming uh, to the classic software ways where you do your own application in your own bubble and your own stuff and it's not communicating with other applications, it's not communicating with the other PC, it's not communicating with anybody because you want to make your own money, your own program, your own income. It's really boring ways to see, to see stuff. I really hate that. And what I want to do is give the tool to overcome that to be able to say photoshop i'm not you but could you please add this layer and i don't want to go in your menu and click layer and artistic and this and this is no i just want to say could you do that please and i don't want to install an api in photoshop i want that photoshop has uh, used this commonly used system that accepts some format of text and those format of text can be interpreted to action and we already have that in the web development system with uh, rest api with uh, webhook and plenty of stuff like this but in the software industry we don't have that and i hate that i hate that so much and so yeah uh <laughs> I want to talk about plenty of stuff, God, uh, about my application, about uh, how it's working, about text, about how it's, how you can use it, how you can make bots and stuff like this. But I think that I told, I, I, I spoke a lot in the, this video and I think I will stop there. Uh, so yeah, th that was the first try of uh the premortem episode where i try to talk like uh, i would die to the tonight and if i have to resume all this talking around about the, the project is that we could live in a better world where um with ai and not with an ai that is an ai but that is an assistance i mean To resume all this video shortly. Virtual reality and augmented reality is a very good device. And that's uh, a very big part of our future. But to be able to work, it needs to be able to uh, first have good uh, context detection on the body of the user of the hand that is universally used, or at least that is facilitated to be able for every developer to use it uh, and every user to contextualize it. So to say, uh, me, if I'm doing that with my hand, it don't mean that I want to save, it means that I want to load this file. And that the user need to be able to choose it. I did not talk about that in my application in, in this video, but 
I want people to be able to contextualize the menu of the game and the application they are using based on the boolean uh, and based on the uh, text they want to send to the application to say do that because I want I, I, I make uh, brackets I don't know how we said in English a parenthèse this is the example of what I hate this is very powerful this is really useful and I play on World of Warcraft for months with this stuff but what happened is that if a designer is using this for a gamer he will say this is jump this is fire this is doing that this is the menu this is this is this is this is this is and you cannot change it <laughs> but if you want to change it you can but it will mess up everything <laughs> and so the, it means that one guy decided for everybody that this command will be played in this way and that's stupid because Maybe me, I want to use this to jump because I don't jump a lot in my strategy. Oh, uh, maybe uh, I want that the B button is not used for an action, but for a context. For example, me in World of Warcraft, I was using this mean I have one target, this mean I have two targets, this mean I have plenty of targets, and based on what I'm pressing here, those buttons were changing. And if I do that, it means I want to talk to my bot because I have several computers turning around and I, was, I want to move a bot. So when I'm doing that, then this is the left bot, this is the right bot. And so it means that with only one controller, I was able to play World of Warcraft, to play plenty of situations in World of Warcraft, to play with two bots on the side that I can move and ask to do some stuff. And was, I was also able to send context. So what I did in one of my experiments is that if I'm pressing that, it means I want to talk to my bot. Okay, I want to say something to them. And here, when I was pressing this button, it means could you fire automatically on anything you see until I say to stop. And this one, it means could you please heal yourself <laughs> because I don't want you to die. <laughs> and uh, this one, it's the most important one. <laughs> it, it's the runaway button. The runaway button, it means I see some player around and this player will report me as being an AI. So could you take a random direction and run away <laughs> to not be reported? <laughs> because bots are not allowed on, on uh, World of Warcraft, but it's so much fun to play um, World of Warcraft with bot because if you are playing like me, with plenty of Mac show and context and stuff like this, you can really um, play World of Warcraft 4, uh, World of Warcraft 2, for, so sorry, where it's a S tier from the top when you can have serial player. And that's really super fun to play. World of Warcraft, in the concept of I'm dying tonight, if I were dying really tonight, that would be my request. Do a Warcraft version in S tier, so strategic uh, view. That's all. You just take WoW and you allow a player to not have one controller in the perspective of the player, but plenty of unity that you uh, at least five or ten of those unity, but that you can really, really control as you want. Giving a bit of logic like this one will play defensive, this one will trigger this kind of so maybe with my software, maybe with your software. Just make a game where player is massively play massively playing um World of Warcraft as a steer, but in all time. It's not mean that you do one game and you play. It means that you come with uh your unit like you are connecting to World of Warcraft. And it means that if you want to do a red uh, or a group dungeon, you will have 30 to 100 units. So if you have a necromancer, you will have like 30 units. If you use uh, more paladin and stuff, you maybe have three, five, four units that you are managing with the power. And uh, a group of five people playing your game in World of Warcraft 2 STR would be plenty of units all around fighting like hell, uh, like big dungeon with 200 to 500 uh, units. It would be a really, really good World of Warcraft version. But uh, all that to say, yeah, the context is really important. 
the sending input is really important. I lost what I wanted to say. But that's not a problem. If I have to resume, so uh, what I wanted to do with open macro input is first allow everybody to use macro. And I mean, try to make people that don't like computer to be able to use those macro and to do to trigger them, to be able to make them, to share them. Oh, I forgot to talk about that. I am an open source guy until tonight because I won't be anymore because I died tonight. I was an open source guy. And uh, what I did in my application, and I really tip you to do this kind of stuff, is to use uh, Git and to use not Git because you are not obliged, but a file configuration system. What I mean by that, I will show you. What I mean uh, by that is that here I have uh, a exe and I have a folder that is called configuration and in this folder I have some file. Here it is only one file but to give you a bit of an example here uh, if I create a uh, hello guys and I, I click like this so like this and I save you see, like when I come back to the application, I have now a hello guy that is true. So basically, what happening? What is happening is that you can create uh, some logic and some situation, some toolbox that are in file type, and that people can modify. And as soon as the file is saved, the application detect that it's saved and it reload everything. Meaning that when I'm playing Doom Eternal, I can say I want a macro that fire with gun jump, take another gun, and fire with the gun. So it's a gun fire gun, gun, gun jump gun. And to be able to do that, I need to modify it often. So I go in Doom, I try the experiment, but I see that the gun is need to be out a bit later. So I go in the file, I modify it a, to a bit the file, I save and I go back in the game and it's ready. The macro is modified and you can play with it. It's really, really cool to, to do that. Why? Because it means that if you take those files and you give it to someone, it will work on his software. And it... Wow, sorry. Ah. It means that, uh, it mean that you can do that. For example, if you want to play my configuration of Doom Eternal, you can open this uh, folder that is in the post-mortem uh, stuff and look how I did it. For example, here, you can see that in application to Boolean, I say if you detect that the title of an application is called Doom Eternal, then put a Boolean that is called Doom. And uh, this kind of stuff, uh, if I, uh, for example, I will save it up uh, in Do -do 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 configuration, save. So here I save the file. And if I go back here, ta-da, I have Apex Unity, Doom, OE, uh, Unity. So if I go in, is, is Unity open? No. Uh, but yeah, basically, uh, I will show you a demo. Uh, Java, uh, open, macro, input. Obi. Save. Up. And so now, if I go in uh, this application that's called Open Micro Input, it's true. But if I'm outside of it, it's false. Ta-da! So it means that here I, I shared in file term some stuff that the application need to do to the community. And it means that, for example, here, um, I will try to find another example that is speaking a lot. Keyboard to Boolean. Uh, ta -ta -ta. For example, here, uh, when I'm playing Doom, uh, I said that if I'm pressing Z, it means that the user is moving forward. If I'm pressing uh, S, it means backward, uh, Q, left, right, etc., etc. Jump, shift, dash, dash, for example, is left shift, and stuff like this. So it means that now if I'm saving that uh, in configuration, Yes, yes, and I go back, 
Ta-da! Now I have those boolean. So you can see that I uh, moving left, moving right, moving forward, moving backward, jumping, uh, and dashing. Ta-da! And so you can easily add stuff like this. So here it's just saying those skateboard can you convert to those boolean? And after that, you can have so conditions. So for example, uh, we open this one. Uh, okay. Um, Try to find uh, it's all wide. Uh, yes, this one is a bit, it's another one. No, it's not interesting. That's the problem of my current system is that uh, as you have plenty of file, um, you if I current and lastly, uh, last, la last version system, uh, it's that you can be a bit lost between all those files around and you need to find where you stored the, the previous uh, stuff. I really need to go to the toilet, so I will stop here. But basically, that you, you can understand that... I, hand I, I really hand here, so the last word before I die. Go on this zip, look around on the file what I did. It's plenty of file that and look to the wiki um, that's a, a bit explaining uh, uh, what the project is about, how to use it and stuff like this. It's not complete, it is, but it's cool. And you will quickly understand that my aim of doing this project was to do an open source way to trigger macro based on Boolean context to be able to help people do it loving doing macro. So I wanted that a secretary, someone that is doing contability, a software developer, a 3D artist could use some ready to use toolbox to be able to do macro and to do macro based on the context they want. And if um, an account guy is a bit smarter than the other, he can do uh, those macro, do those contexts and share it, share those files to another account guy. And this new account guy has something ready to use for his accounting. And that way of doing is really, really important because it's an open source way to improve world to improve macro, to improve the use of macro, to improve productivity, to improve um, life. Why spend two hours doing something if a bot or some code can you help you doing in 10 minutes? Why? And that's the, that's the question we should ask. It's not, uh, does AI will destroy a job? Or, just or, or AI will just improve job that don't need to spend so much time doing stupid shit. And so this kind of tool is really cool because as it's open source, as you can share file to other, it means that the community can make some macro, the community can make some macro con context, share that to another community and know the other community can profite of that and uh, use it without having to think a lot about it. But if they want, they can modify it. And that's amazing. And if we do that, and if we link the this Boolean system with an AI and with augmented and virtual reality and other device, I really have I, I really think that we could we could do crazy project and improve the life of lot of people. That said, I will go to the toilet and die die tonight. It's really so yeah it's really hard to it's really hard this concept of video because uh, nobody wants to think about uh, if I like an eye what happened but I will try to I, I really want to learn to do this kind of video so we'll try to have some when I rebirth when I'm rebirthed to, to, to tomorrow <laughs> because technically I would be dead uh, when I will redo some kind of video like this I will try to uh, make a list of rules that I cannot break and if I break I need to restart the video and yeah on that if you watch this video I say thank you very much 
it was a very long one and a very weird one and the concept is I suppose hard to understand because you are not in my head and you did not program for four months this software and so there is plenty of stuff that you don't understand but I invite you really to go in this zip file to download it to play a bit around with it to try to understand it or to go to the wiki page that is linked in the description and in the zip file and even if it's dirty even if it's buggy it's already working and I use it a lot on the four last months I use it for botting with Wo I use it for playing Age of Empire I use it for do play Doom I use it to play faster than light I play it with for Apex and that was amazing so may the code be with you and see you in the next episode of Premortem even if should not be a next episode of Premortem. It I I have really had difficulties to think about this concept. But bye and not see you next time. <laughs> I I close here. <laughs>